Exploring social media and cultural production has so far revealed that users have access to new production tools and use them to reappropriate content as a means of reflecting our contemporary society. We've already seen the example of the production of memes where humour is used to reflect what is happening in society. There's also those social commentaries that highlight an aspect of contemporary society through digital storytelling, which is a form of a first-person documentary making. But how are institutions engaging with this production methodology? It's rare for any kind of institution not to have a collection of social media platforms associated with their brand. That's only half of the equation, however. These brands and organisations may be able to aggregate users to their social media platforms, but what happens when the users arrive there? One of the great demonstrations of social media integration into media production is Jimmy Fallon and The Tonight Show. His approach is a typical example of how cultural institutions engage their audiences to co-create content. The producers of the show begin with an overall theme that's likely to engage the audience. They then invite the audience to contribute material and finally that material is polished and presented on the program to complete the circle. But this is a highly managed process and it's not left to chance. The Jimmy Fallon Show has a very nuanced understanding of its social audience and is continually engaging them through social conversations. Often, users will be asked to engage a certain hashtag, for example, my first job, which will inevitably lead to a flurry of comedic responses that are read out during the live program. These primary and secondary conversations with the audience provide a very useful process of engaging users across social media. Another example of how global institutions are including social media into their projects can be drawn from politics. So many elections are said to have been won across social media these days, for example Indonesia, the USA and Australia to some extent. So it's clear social media has become an incredibly important tool to use in public awareness campaigns. If we compare two of the candidates for the 2016 American presidential election, Trump and Clinton, we see their very particular and styled incorporation of social media into their election campaigns. For the purposes of this discussion, we'll only examine the candidate's use of Twitter. If we look at how Trump engages his audience, it's reflective of a right-wing party. There's an authoritative voice, it's generally a one-way type of conversation, the proposals are clearly defined before being disseminated, and the tone could be described as somewhat dismissive. In comparison, if we look at Clinton's use of Twitter, while also having that authoritative voice, her tweets are often posed as questions, they strive to engage public discussion, and they give the impression at least that there's room for negotiation on the key issues. If we assume social media has brought citizens closer to public issues through social media and the participatory process, there are a few common areas that both the Fallon and the presidential election campaign process have in common. These can be extrapolated to any social media company and include, one, a nuanced understanding of the norms, rules, and languages within the social media space. Social media campaigns never work if they're constructed outside of that social environment they serve. It's crucial that social media producers are familiar with the users and have a very clear knowledge of the language they use and the rules of the space. Two, bring the people closer to the centre of the conversation. By engaging users and bringing them closer to the heart of the conversation, we're providing the opportunity for them to take a greater ownership of the process. With greater ownership, users are more likely to contribute high quality and valuable content. Three, be a voice in the space, but don't dominate the conversation. The role of the social media producer in this environment is to facilitate conversation, not to dominate. It's really up to the users to generate the goodwill in the space, and the role of the host is to guide that discussion. Four, provide tools that make it easy for users to interact, create, and contribute. This is largely controlled by the design of the social media platforms, where facilitators may not be able to choose which social media are used. 
They can, however, ensure they're integrating tools and platforms in a way that gives users the necessary means of contributing and participating for free and with a very low barrier to entry. So this video has highlighted how institutions are incorporating social media use in their projects, but it's still worth reminding ourselves of some of the underpinning arguments of social media affordances. Now these include used or being used, increased participation and exploitative labour, greater access for citizens to public issues, or perhaps access to tools to create accurate and authentic representations of our culture's history. In this context, we might ask ourselves, are these activities engaging or are they exploitative? Merely organising users into consumers. And does participation through social media increase the legitimate interaction between individual and institution?